I'm very glad to introduce you a brief history of Armenian cinema. Uh, next year we are going to celebrate, at least it's my desire, to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Armenian cinema. When I uh, say about this, many people are being surprised whether uh, the Armenian cinema has such a long uh, history, but that's true. Although uh, the very first Armenian films are not uh, survived, but still uh, there are evidences that already 100 years ago, uh, the Armenians made some films. Uh, as you know, the old films, they uh, were being destroyed very easily. That's why no single copy survived from uh, first Armenian films. We can say that um, uh, the film in Armenia, it has maybe uh, 90 years, 85 years old history, but Armenian cinema already 100 years because um, already in 1912, an Armenian intellectual from Cairo, Vahan Zartarian, unfortunately I haven't his photo to show, uh, he made the uh, first Armenian film in Egypt, um, Armenian General Benevolent Union uh, sponsored that this uh, intellectual, Zartarian, uh, make a film uh, about the Armenian theater and also uh, general Armenian reality showing in um, static, uh, static scenes uh, some photos from uh, Armenian architecture, uh, geography, famous Armenian individuals, and also uh, Armenian actors. Uh, unfortunately, this film we cannot uh, watch today, but uh, in the beginning of the uh, 20s, uh, this film screened in many countries, also in United States of America. And we uh, found lots of reviews on this film and where mm, luckily a whole book was published about this very first film. So uh, that's my um, suggestion that during our next Golden Apricot International Film Festival, we published a book about um, uh, Armenian film prehistory and consider this uh, gentleman, Vahan Zartayan, as the actual founder of Armenian cinema. So maybe you know that all the uh, arts um, have their own uh, date of birth, but we don't know exactly. But cinema is the only art that we know the exact date of its birth. It is uh, 1895, and even we mm, can be mm, more uh, particular, telling that December 25 uh, is being considered as the mm, birthday of cinema, because that day, first uh, films by Lumière brothers, French uh, filmmakers, have been screened for the first time in um, uh, Paris, and what is interesting that among first spectators, there was also an Armenian who was not someone unknown, but a future uh, estimated Armenian linguist, Heracha Ajarian, who was a student at that time in Sorbonne. And being a poor student, he assisted uh, to one of the first uh, film screenings as a distributor of tickets and as a fee, as a salary, he um, was permitted to watch one of the first film screenings. As about um, uh, first film screenings in Armenia, it already happened after four years uh, that um, in Yerevan, the films by Louis and Auguste Lumiers have been uh, presented. Yeah, I'm looking for uh, one of the first uh, cinema ads in Armenian press. 
you can see the name Lumière Kinematograph, which means the cinematography uh, in Armenian. So um, what's interesting that as in all other parts of the world, the reaction of the first film screening in Armenia was the same. Uh, maybe some of you uh, have seen this very first film uh, arriving of uh, the train to the station by Lumiere brothers. And um, everybody are being scared and they escape from the hall thinking that it's a real train is coming, uh, arriving on them. So this happened in uh, 1899 in Yerevan. Then, gradually, the first film uh, theaters, uh, the first cinemas, have been opened in different Armenian uh, towns, including Yerevan, Gyumri, and Kars. And what's interesting is that in Armenian, first cinemas have been called Elektrotatron, electric theaters. Okay? Um, and uh, the Armenian press in Constantinople and Tiflis began uh, already in, in the beginning of 1912-30 uh, uh, to um, publish first ads of uh, Armenian uh, uh, of films. Here you see the, the ad of a Russian film. Uh, but what is most interesting in this ad that we see the name of one of first Armenian film actors here, of Asho Shahatuni, a theatrical actor, by the way, who later became the commandant of Yerevan during the First Republic. Okay. So uh, I mentioned already that in 1912 the first Armenian cin uh, film was made. Then, in when we go through the old newspapers, sometimes we see this expression, Armenian film, Armenian cinema. But what is, what is about? Uh, we have very uh, vague um, understanding. But, for example, in 1915, the genocide year, uh, we know that uh, Armenian writer Vanetians made a film consisted of five parts uh, on Vartanans war, Vartan Mamikonyan's uh, struggle. Unfortunately, this is also something that we haven't any additional information on it, and uh, we cannot be 100% sure whether this project was accomplished or not. And um, I have um, calculated that uh, at least five, six films have been done in pre-Soviet Armenia. Uh, well, during the Soviet times, uh, we always were reading that it was uh, owing to Soviet um, authorities that the Armenian people uh, started to make uh, films and having their own film industry. That's true um, in terms of film studio, as a film as an in, uh, um, industry. But uh, as we saw in different parts of the world, the Armenians made films. And not only Armenians, but also some non-Armenian filmmakers were being interested in Armenian um, subjects. And in 1919, in New York, uh, American filmmaker Oscar Apfel made this film called Ravished Armenia, based on memories of a genocide survivor, Aurora or Asha Luis Mardiganyan. Maybe, maybe many of you know about this movie because uh, after this movie, um, a film, uh, a, a book was published. It calls it The Auction of Souls by the same author, Aurora Mardiganyan. And um, the Near East Relief collected lots of fonts. Uh, of, um, from the profit of this film in order to take um, many Armenian orphans from Near East to United States. Of course, uh, this we cannot consider as an Armenian film, but uh, in the prehistory of Armenian cinema, this has an important role. And unfortunately, this film also, um, no, any, not any single copy had been survived because um, 
uh, they say that uh, many uh, Turks tried to destroy the existed copies. And only uh, f some 15 or 20 minutes have been edited in, a, in another film made in uh, France in 1926. Thus, uh, these 20 minutes uh, reels uh, is survived and you can um, see it um, on YouTube and uh, the Yerevan Genocide Museum Institute also has in their collection this uh, 15 minutes. Okay, and besides, uh, in Russia, in 1940, they made two films with Armenian subject, uh, The Tragedy of Turkish Armenia. You see a scene from that film. And another one, Under the Yoke of Kurds. So, depicting the scenes from Armenian massacres in Ottoman Empire, but again, those films are also are not available anymore. So, uh, film history of uh, Armenia uh, in Armenia um, begins in 1923 when the newly established Soviet government uh, decided to found a special film studio for making regular films on Armenia. They were, first they were thinking about only chronicles and documentaries because you can imagine uh, Armenia in 20s, it was very poor, a uh, country with no economy, no um, uh, finances, lots of orphans, unemployment. But, but because the uh, Soviet uh, government decided to adopt a policy of um, cultural uh, buildings, uh, they considered cinema um, one of the tools, uh, and especially that if we remember what Lenin said, that. Uh, the cinema is the most important art for us in terms of propaganda. So um, the Armenian uh, Bolshevik government um, decided that we, even with one uh, single film uh, camera, we should start this production, and they succeeded. So uh, for organizing this job, they invited I, Armenian actor and director Hamo Beknazarian, who was famous in pre-Soviet Russia as a film actor. As you see, he's, uh, he was a quite handsome uh, man who acted in um, 50 maybe Russian films. Uh, his emploi, uh, acting emploi, was a first lover. But uh, after, after the revolution, he switched uh, on to directing, and he directed his first films in Georgia, then in Azerbaijan. And uh, in the uh, 20s, he moved to Yerevan, where he was born, and started making films. So Hamo Beknazarian's um, uh, he was very, um, a very rare filmmaker because he could s easily make films in different countries, in different cultures, and establishing, giving them some um, taste how to make their own um, national cinema. Well, uh, I don't know whether the Georgians or Azeris now acknowledged him as a uh, one of the founders of their national cinemas, but, well, um, he also made films in uh, Chechnya, in uh, Tajikistan, in Uzbekistan, and made the very first uh, films from the life of uh, Far East uh, cultures, like uh, Nivhis, yeah? 
they are kind of Eskimo-like um, uh, tribes. And as far as I know, they even do not exist anymore, uh, being assimilated into Russians. So, uh, but of course, his services, his um, investment in development of Armenian, his own national uh, cinematography, uh, uh, film art is uh, his most important work that he had made. Uh, in 1926, um, his first Armenian feature film, Namus, uh, was um, realized in uh, Yerevan, and it was a big success, not only being a first Armenian feature film, but um, Unlike to other films on oriental plots, this film, Namus, presents another face of oriental, of Asian reality. In the 20s, not only in Soviet cinema, but also in uh, Hollywood films, the orientalism was in the fashion. And Orient have been, this is the first Armenian film, <laughs> camera, you can see. So, Orient was something very exotic, very uh, sugary, uh, with its harems, with fountains and rahat lohums. But uh, actually, oh, okay, but actually, uh, the Orient had also its cruel face. And Hamo Beknazian was the first who dared to present this part of uh, Orient. Namus is a story based on um, Alexander Shirvanzadeh's very popular um, novel and later a play. Uh, it has been staged in uh, Caucasian theaters for thousands of times and now on the screen. And the best forces of Armenian theater have been um, employed in this film. You can see Hasmik, you can see Hovanes Abelian, who considered one of the uh, most important figures of Armenian classical theater, and this is his only Armenian, uh, only film, so we can have some understanding how he looked like in, uh, on stage. So, a tragic story between those two young people, Susan and Seiran, that um, because of this um, ill, Ill um, understanding of uh, conception of Namus, honor, uh, their life has been uh, destroyed. So, some sketches from Namus. Gossiping women from Namus. So, as far as I know, uh, the lady inside is the mother of uh, eminent Ar American um, Armenian filmmaker Ruben Mamulian, Virginia Mamulian, who was an actress and later she moved to the United States. So, uh, and after Namus, Hamo Beknazarian made uh, his second film called Zare. This is first film on Kurdish topic about a beautiful Kurdish girl. You see her. Okay. Now oh, this is still uh, Namus. Aha, uh -huh, this is from uh, Zare. So, uh, for the first time, the whole peasant life, the ethnography of Kurdish people has been reflected on the screen. And uh, the Kurds were very thankful to Beknazarian that his second film he made from his life, telling that, uh, please show them that we also have poor, that we also have um, honest people, because um, the world recognizes us as uh, as a tribe of bandits, but th that's not true. 
And uh, they say that after watching this film, Iosif Stalin declared that I wish that uh, the Armenians only make films on the life of different oriental uh, cultures because they are the best in that way. So, since from Zare, this is Zare, Maria Tenazi, an Armenian actress who died very young. So after Zare, he made a very funny film that until now you can laugh on it. It's called Shore and Shore Shore. There was a very interesting and funny Danish film, Pat and Patashon, about a, a tall hero and his friend, short hero. And um, this film, Shore and Shore Shore, is made by its um, analogy with this Danish film. Okay, Shore and Shore Shore. So, Armenians, Kurds, and they came Persians. His film, Beknazian's next film, Haspush, presents the riots of Persian poors in 19th century. Uh, it's interesting that uh, this time, Iran hadn't their film production, but already a film about Persians have been made. And this is uh, another his film, A uh, House on Volcano. What's interesting that in this scene, the film specialists always say that before Orson Welles, who found uh, this kind of um, sequence with a certain depth, we already see this in Beknazarian's film. And uh, I agree with one of our film critics uh, describing Beknazarian as uh, Griffith and Flaherty in one person because he was uh, successful in making big feature films and also documentaries on different oriental uh, people. Aha, uh -huh. you see his oriental film about this Niv tribe, although this is not our main film production, okay? And of course, who else, if not Hamobek Nazarian, who made the first Armenian uh, talking film, uh, Pepo, in 1935. It's interesting that in the same year, his compatriot Ruben Mamoulian made the very first color film in Hollywood, Becky Sharp, in 35. But in Armenia, uh, the first uh, talking film, so um, in this film you can see uh, 19th century Tiflis, the life of uh, Armenian artisans and uh, small traders. Uh, it's another honor story. Most of Armenian uh, classical literature uh, works regard to honor because this conception sometimes um, hearted uh, disturb the um, society highly, as it happened to also in this film, in this plot. So some sketches of this film. Simon Eristavi, a Georgian uh, painter. Avet Avetisian, a uh, veteran actor, acted as a um, a rich peasant whom uh, the poor people punished for his sins. Uh, it's very interesting that for the first time the street, the uh, crowd became a hero of a film. And in this film we see not only lots of dances, uh, songs, uh, habits, it's a kind of ethnographical film but also um, the old Armenian cathedral of Tiflis, which was ruined in 1937, was immortalized in this film. Many expressions from this film until now 
are being used in Armenian language. Okay, then uh, Beknazaran was blamed that he's making films on history. What about uh, contemporary life or um, so from the Soviet history? So in 37, he made a film Zangezur on civil war in Armenia. Of course, now you cannot watch this film because it's a very propaganda, Soviet ideological film about the fight between Dashnaks and Bolsheviks in Armenia. Okay. And in uh, 1945, he made a historical film, first Armenian historical film from 18th century Armenians' uh, struggle uh, against uh, Persia, David Beck. So why again historical uh, topic? Because it was uh, during the Second World War and uh, the um, audience needed to be in courage and in a good uh, spirit for, uh, in their struggle against the Nazis. Mm -hmm. But um, David Beck was his, we could say, last successful film in Armenia. Later, um, after the victory uh, in war, Stalin decided that now he should control every single film uh, that is being made in Soviet Union. And only 10 um, filmmakers are being permitted to make films. And Hamobek Nazian was among uh, those uh, Ten filmmakers, but but his uh, next project after David Beck, the second caravan, uh, was criticized by Stalin and it was destroyed. Maybe because uh, of its um, subject, uh, the repatriation of Armenians, as we know, uh, in forties, in the, at the end of forties. The Armenians uh, were uh, repatriated to Soviet Union, more than 100,000 Armenians. But most of them, or not most, but half of them at least, have been exiled to Siberia as foreign spies. So maybe that was the reason this film was, uh, wasn't approved and yeah, destroyed. So after that, he made a very weak film, Anahit, based on uh, Ghazalus Agayan's popular fairy tale. But it was, of course, nothing special. And after that, he moved to Moscow. And later, he made two films in Central Asia, uh, Nasreddin in um, Tajikistan. You see Armenian actor Gurgen Tonuns as... Uh, Hoja Nasreddin, and also uh, another weak film in Uzbekistan. So, but um, those few films that uh, Hamo Beknazayan made, they're in a national uh, treasury of Armenian film history. And um, when Armenian, after his death, the Armenian film studio, High Film or Armen Film, was named after him. Hamo Beknazarian Armen Film Studio. Okay. So um, he was first Armenian uh, feature film director in Armenia, and um, parallelly some other new uh, filmmakers also uh, appeared. Of course, uh, their films were not as successful as those of Bek Nazayan, but still they also had an uh, important role uh, in, um, in the history of Armenian cinema. For example, this comedy is quite funny. It calls Mexican Diplomats. Of course, nothing to <laughs> do with Mexico, but about two friends pretending to be Mexicans in the 30s. The evil spirit 
Amasi Mardirosian, who made the last Armenian uh, silent film, Gikos. This is another film on Kurds called Kurds Yezids, already presenting that during the Soviet time, Kurdish people are uh, developed and they do not pray for uh, rain anymore. So another propaganda film, Hasmik and Avetian. Those uh, old films are important for Armenian culture that we see many theatrical um, actors alive on the screen and we can understand uh, about their style also on the stage. Okay. This is the last Armenian silent film, Gikhoj, based on Hovanes Tumanyan's very popular and very, very sad story uh, about how a boy uh, is being executed by wealthy people in uh, Tiflis and died. Gikor. And in the 30s uh, are also important for Armenian film history that the first animation films have been made and the author, the director was this um, guy Lev Atamanov or Levon Atamanyan who worked in major film studios in Moscow and in 1938 uh, this is again, this is Atamanova, 1938, he made uh, first Armenian uh, animation film, The Cat and the Dog. Some sketches from old films. Okay. So, the worst uh, period for um, Armenian cinema was uh, m from mid 40s until mid 50s. There were some years that no and uh, not any single feature film have been was made. Only documentaries. Documentaries. How uh, happy is the life of Soviet Armenia? Uh, how uh, all the kolkhoz and sovkhoz people are happy and. Um, how we defeated our enemy and this kind of things that's impossible to uh, watch now. But um, already after Stalin's death, uh, some new trend is started to appear in um, Armenian cinema. First of all, uh, the religious themes there, uh, were absent, absolutely absent, both in documentaries and in feature films. Uh, when in 1945 or 46, the first uh, church meeting was happened in Echmiadzin after being um, refused for so many years. So Armenian filmmaker Artashes Hai Artyan, you see him uh, on this photo, made a film and uh, those documentaries are being screened before the big films in cinemas. And uh, the masses, the new generations who never attended any church, uh, who never heard any uh, religious music, spiritual uh, culture, they suddenly saw that uh, the Armenians also have this culture of religion. religion. So in the 50s, as I mentioned before, it was a time of melodramas. And um, you see uh, two popular Armenian actors, Heracha Nersisian and Avet Avetisian, in a um, uh, classical, again, Shirvan Zadeh's uh, play, uh, in sake of honor in a film, another honor story, right? A film trilogy about Kamo, the revolutionary, uh, was made in the 50s which was the, we can consider, first adventurous films. Of course, Kamo is a kind of character that now uh, lots of people, even historians, have some <laughs> suspicions whether he was, there was such a person who made uh, important contribution to the revolution, but still, in 50s, he was a hero. 
another propaganda film on um, uh, unification of Armenia with Russia. And here you see Armenian uh, writer Hachatur Abovian and Russian writer Griboedov in this film. Oh, that's all? No. Another melodrama, the uh, song of, of the first love. Um, this is quite a nice musical film, we can say. Uh, and songs from this film are popular until now, written by popular Armenian composer Arno Babajanyan. Okay. And especially uh, some films with uh, popular Armenian clown Leonid Yengibarian uh, in the 50s are important because uh, you can see this brilliant comic, this brilliant clown in that film. And yeah, another comedy. It's, it's interesting that first it was um, time for melodramas and the end of um, 50s when it was a, a, as Ilya Ereburg called the Thai period of um, Soviet Union uh, many comedies started to be made and Soviet people were allowed to laugh and you see Tezvezik today's film so Film industry in the beginning of 60s already started to, to be uh, developed and 60s uh, were important for Armenian uh, culture that finally in literature, in fine arts, in theater, in music, new generations, new names came and um, the most eminent representatives of Armenian. Um, okay, I will go back to this. Of Armenian cinema, they came uh, in this period. So you see Arman Manarian, whose film Tashvajik we just saw. You, uh, as you can notice, the artistic ensemble is quite forceful in this film. Hrachan Ersesian, Kotikian, and Tolak Amerikian. Later, he made the first Armenian um, film operetta, Karine, based on popular 19th century um, musical operetta, Leblebiji Hol Hol Agam, by Dikran Chuhajian. Another film on um, artisans of Gyumri, Hernal Akhpur, well, Hernal. So, and uh, recently, Arma Madayan made an uh, animation film uh, on, based on Sasna Tsarej, uh, the uh, national epic of uh, Armenia, Daredevils of Sassoon. Uh, Frunze Dovlatian, who made the film uh, Hello, It's Me, which is the first Armenian film on uh, scientists, on intellectuals. And uh, the long, first uh, film, Armenian film in two parts, After this film, the main actor, Armen Jigarhanyan, became very popular not only in Armenia, but also in Soviet Union. He moved to Moscow and acted in more than 300 Russian films. And uh, Hello, It's Me is the first Armenian film which was screened in prestigious Cannes Film Festival and uh, French film criticism appreciated it very much, very high. So. After uh, this film, Frunze Dovlatian made another film on civil war in Armenia. Brother Saroyans have one brother who is Dashnak, kills another brother, 
who was a communist. Okay. A chronicle of Yerevan days about nowadays life of Yerevan people. So after that he made a film called Delivery about the establishment of Soviet uh, rules in Armenia. This is Miasnikyan, the main character, an old Bolshevik. That's very exciting that for the first time the uh, intellectuals, the writers of Armenian past uh, were per portrayed in this film. Y here you see poet Shushanik Gurginyan and also poet Yerishe Charents. So, after Perestroika in mid uh, 80s, in mid 80s, oh, sorry, <laughs> yeah, uh, Dovlatyan made a film called Garot, uh, longer or missing, about uh, an Armenian refugee from Western Armenia who in the 30s uh, crossed the uh, Soviet uh, Turkish border to visit his native his native uh, village okay okay but um, in 60s two outstanding two outstanding filmmakers of Armenia we call them two Peace, Parajanov and Peleshian came. Maybe you know those names already. So Parajanov made one documentary and one feature film in Armenia, but his film until now is considered to be the best one. Some of his sketches. So uh, he was an Armenian from Tiflis, Georgia, and he made films mostly in Ukraine where he worked for a long time but because um, because of his artistic nature okay uh, okay so the, uh, this uh, fragments from his film Hakobhov Natanyan a documentary and later he made The Color of Pomegranate or Sayat Nova which is a very aesthetic and symbolic film, a little bit abstract film about a medieval, um, a medieval Armenian poet. So, uh, okay, I'll introduce now uh, Henrik Malian. Now, unfortunately, we have not much time that I can speak about the others, but Henrik Malians, whose film A Piece of Sky we're going to watch now, and that was another master. Unfortunately, he died um, uh, without accomplishing many of his projects, but many of his films are, if not internationally important, or uh, important in terms of um, film language or film style, but still they are the best uh, uh, representing, reflecting the Armenian soul, the Armenian social life, the Armenian mentality. That's why we uh, selected this film, A Piece of Sky, for showing uh, tonight. You see Yerankyuni, Triangle, Triangle. Uh, we and our mountains. Nahapet may be the best film on um, Armenian genocide without showing any scene from the massacres. Okay. So, and his last major film, A Piece of Sky. Now, let me to read a part from New York Times about this film and since it has no subtitles. This is from Parajanov. Okay. So, A Piece of Sky, a film from 1980, is the story of Torik, an orphan in a small village. Torik is so sad that he frequently looks at the sky for some kind of encouragement, which is why a piece of the sky 
is a direct translation of the film's Armenian name. As a small boy, Torik is adopted by his uncle, who teaches him to make straw saddles, and his aunt. When the aunt is widowed after Torik grows, grows up, she devotes herself to playing matchmaker for Torik. But no one in the village wants to marry him because he is poor. The entire midsection of the film seems devoted to shots of picturesque Armenian doors being slammed in the aunt's face. Here's the part about the bordello. A trio of prostitutes arrives in the proper little town and the men begin pacing hotly outside the bordello door, then sneaking inside when no one is looking. When Torik tries this, he meets a sweet-faced, very virginal prostitute named Angel, who is a demure as her name suggests. No one in town would approve of Torik's falling in love with such a woman, but no one in town would marry him anyhow, so what has he got to lose? Okay, excuse me for, um, I have to interrupt my presentation of Armenian film, but if you have some questions about the current uh, state of Armenian cinema or uh, more, you're welcome to do it after the film or in general. Thank you so much.